obstetric examination. So finally, I've given in to all your requests and created a video on the obstetric examination. So first of all, before starting off with the examination, we need to speak to the patient, introduce ourselves, confirm patient details, and build a rapport with the patient. We explain what we are going to be doing during the examination. So I'm telling her here that I will be having a feel of her tummy, checking the position of the baby, and also listening to the heart of the baby. I also asked her if she would like to empty her bladder before proceeding with the examination. Next, we need to make sure we have all our equipment available. The Pinard stethoscope, the handheld fetal Doppler monitor, lubricant gel, a measuring tape, gloves, and hand sanitizer. Then we want to make sure that the couch is arranged at a 15 degree angle. We do this to avoid aortocaval compression. So beyond 20 weeks of gestation, the pregnant uterus applies pressure over the inferior vena cava and aorta. As you might imagine, the pressure is more pronounced when the mother is lying flat on her back. Compression of the vena cava results in decreased venous return to the heart and therefore limits blood flow out to the placenta and the mother, which can cause maternal hypotension and fetal distress. Therefore, we always examine pregnant patients with the bed arranged at an angle. Back to the video. So next, we're going to start off by sanitizing our hands. Then helping the patient onto the couch, making sure she is comfortable, and then asking her if she's okay to proceed with the examination, therefore gaining consent. We'll start off by looking at her hands. So over here, I started off by palpating for the radial pulse. We can also take a look at the color, as pale hands, for example, might be a sign of hypoperfusion. Peripheral edema can be normal in late pregnancy, however, can be a sign of preeclampsia. Palmar erythema can also be a normal finding in pregnancy. Other findings of note include temperature and capillary refill time. Next, we'll take a look at her face. Usually, this is done while you're having the initial conversation with the patient. Findings of note include jaundice, facial edema, and conjunctival pallor which in this case, our patient does not have. And then we can proceed to the abdominal examination. So here we'll ask the patient to uncover her tummy, and we want the abdomen to be exposed from the pubic symphysis to the xiphys sternum. And next, we can proceed with inspection. So of course, we can notice that the abdomen is distended, compatible with pregnancy. We can see a linea nigra here, as you can see, there's a pigmented line going down the maternal abdomen, which occurs because of increased melanocyte-stimulating hormone produced by the placenta. The umbilicus is everted. We always should look for any scars. Over here, she has a scar across her abdomen, which was from a previous scoliosis surgery. We should also take note of any possible laparoscopy scars or a Fanishteel scar used for a previous C-section. Fetal movements might be visible, as well as strea gravidarum, which this patient does not have. Strea gravidarum is basically a medical term for stretch marks. They tend to be red when fresh, therefore from the current pregnancy, or white when they are old from a previous pregnancy. And these old white striae are known as striae albicans. Next, we are going to start with palpation. So starting off with palpating for the fundus of the uterus, using the ulnar border of your left hand, starting from the xiphys sternum, making your way down until you feel a hard surface, which is the fundus of the uterus. This will help us for our next step, which is the measurement of the symphyseal fundal height. So here we are measuring the distance from the symphysis pubis up to the fundus of the uterus. I am keeping the measuring tape inch side up so as not to cheat, but we are interested in the centimeter measurement. The gestation in weeks should be equivalent to the symphysial fundal height after around 20 weeks. On average, a 20 week pregnancy should reach the level of the umbilicus, and a 36 week pregnancy should reach about the xiphys sternum. As you can see from this image, as the pregnancy progresses, the measurement starts decreasing in size. And this is because of the movement of the fetal head down into the pelvis. 
We will have more videos coming up on the significance of your measurement not matching the, the gestation, so stay tuned. Next, we can proceed with determining how the fetus is positioned inside the uterus. But first, a quick revision, starting with the fetal lie. So the fetal lie refers to the relationship between the long axis of the fetus and the long axis of the mother. Therefore, the fetal lie could be longitudinal, oblique, or transverse. Presentation refers to the part of the fetus in the lower part of the uterus, and therefore closest to the maternal pelvis. This could be a cephalic presentation, where the head is presenting, a breech presentation with the bum or legs presenting. There may be no fetal parts in the lower portion of the uterus, as you can see here with a transverse lie. Another option is also a shoulder presentation. So back to our examination once again. So how do we determine these examination findings, which are very important, dictating possible changes in the mode of delivery? So starting off with the fetal lie, so I place my hands on either side of the uterus, always ensuring that my left hand is on the left side of the uterus and right hand on the right side. Therefore, I am always facing the mother and never facing away from her. Then as you can see, I keep one hand held in the same position, while the other is feeling for the fetal parts from the top to the bottom of the uterus on one side, they will repeat the same on the other side. Here I am trying to palpate for a smooth surface on one side, which will represent the back of the baby, and the other side of the uterus should feel more empty or not as smooth, due to the presence of the limbs. Next, we want to feel for the presenting part, and we have two maneuvers which we can perform in this case. We have the polyx grip, where we use the thumb and third finger on either side of the presenting part to palpate it. Before performing this maneuver, we need to inform the patient that this might be a bit uncomfortable. A head typically feels hard, like a tennis ball, while a bum tends to feel softer. Or else, you can palpate the presenting part using both hands from the top end. However, I tend to prefer the first option. Now, in late pregnancy, we also assess for engagement. Engagement refers to the descent of the presenting part into the maternal pelvis in correlation to the pubic symphysis. It is measured in fifths palpable, fifths referring to your five fingers. Therefore, to assess for engagement, you place your right hand above the pubic symphysis and assess up to which finger the presenting part is palpable. If not engaged, five fifths of the presenting part is palpable. If well engaged, for example, only two fifths of the presenting part is palpable. Finally, on the abdomen, we're going to listen to the fetal heart. Over here, we have got a fetal Doppler monitor, which is used merely for auscultation. It doesn't give us any further information regarding the fetal heart rate. You can have a look at my videos on CTGs to learn more about that. So we position the probe over the anterior shoulder, and we can decipher where the anterior shoulder is located, depending on our previous examination, and our estimation of the location of the back and head of the baby. Once in that position, we keep the probe in place and rotate around until the fetal heart is audible. While doing this, we should always compare this heart rate with the maternal pulse to ensure that they are different. The fetal heart should be faster when compared to the maternal heart rate. In the past, a Pinard stethoscope was used. Of course, now these have become obsolete, but might be important for you to know about for exam purposes. The large opening must be placed on the maternal abdomen, while the smaller one should be placed against your ear. It is important not to hold the plastic body with your hand while trying to listen to the fetal heart, as this will cause interference. So the abdominal examination is ready, and we can ask the patient to cover herself up again. Lastly, we're going to take a look at her legs. So first we try to uncover them, ideally we get the legs uncovered till above the knee. We inspect them first and notice any discoloration, erythema or obvious swelling. Next, we can assess for edema by placing your index and third finger over the tibia and press downwards. Then lift up and look for any indentation in, on the skin. In this case, we noticed immediately that she did have some mild edema, as you can also see the mark from her socks. 
we can also assess for deep vein thrombosis by assessing for any cough tenderness. This completes the examination. We help our patient get dressed, explain our findings, and thank her. This video is a bit different from my usual. I hope you find this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos. Like and subscribe!